Rachel here and we're going to say hello to the big bugs. Hello big bugs! Can you give me a wave if you're a busy bug? Hello busy bugs! And can you give me a little wave if you're a baby bug? Hello baby bugs! Now today we're going to do a little story that we all love called Monkey Puzzle. Here we go, shall we find out what happens to the little monkey? I've lost my mum! Hush, little monkey, don't you cry. I'll help you find her, said Butterfly. Let's have a think. How big is she? She's big, said the monkey, bigger than me. Bigger than you? Then I've seen your mum. Come, little monkey, come, come, come. No, 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 that's an elephant. My mum isn't a great grey hunk. She hasn't got tusks or a curly trunk. She doesn't have great thick baggy knees. And anyway, her tail coils round trees. She coils round trees, then she's very near. Quick little monkey, she's over here. Oh, who could it be? Oh, no, 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 that's a snake. Mum doesn't look a bit like this. She doesn't slither about and hiss. She doesn't curl around a nest of eggs. And anyway, my mum's got more legs. It's legs we're looking for now, you say. I know where she is then. Come this way. No, 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 that's a spider. Mum isn't black and hairy and fat. She's not got so many legs as that. She'd rather eat fruit than swallow a fly. And she lives in the treetops way up high. She lives in the trees, you should have said. Your mummy's hiding above your head. No, 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 that's a parrot. Mum's got a nose and not a beak. She doesn't squawk and squabble and shriek. She doesn't have claws or feathery wings. And anyway, my mum leaps and springs. Aha, I've got it. She leaps about. She's just round the corner without a doubt. Ah, oh, no, 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 that's a frog. Butterfly, butterfly, please don't joke. Mum's not green and she doesn't croak. She's not all slimy. Oh dear, what a muddle. She's brown and furry and nice to cuddle. Brown fur, why didn't you tell me so? We'll find her in no time, off we go. Oh no, 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 that's a bat. Why do you keep on getting it wrong? Mum doesn't sleep the whole day long. I told you she's got no wings at all. And anyway, she's not nearly so small. Your mum's not little. Now let me think. She's down by the river, having a drink. Oh, no, 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 that's the elephant again. Butterfly, butterfly, can't you see? None of these creatures look like me. You never told me she looks like you. Of course I didn't, I thought you knew. I didn't know, I couldn't, you see. None of my babies look like me. So she looks like you. Well, if that's the case, we'll soon discover her hiding place. Oh, no, 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 that's my dad. Come, little monkey, come, come, come. It's time I took you home to Mum. Oh, so the little baby monkey found his mummy in the end because butterflies, babies, are caterpillars. So well done, little monkey, he found his mum. Now, we're going to do a little poem now from our little book, Fireflies at Midnight. And we're going to do the story about the frog. So we're listening out for things that rhyme. Frog, baron, I'm the baron. I'm the duke, I'm the king of this piece of the pond. When it's muggy, when it's buggy, in the moonlight, hear me sing. Baron, I'm the baron, I'm the duke, I'm the king. So what rhymes did we hear in that one? I think we had muggy and buggy, and we had sing and king. So there is a little frog in the evening. There we go. And speaking about frogs, we can learn all about growing frogs from our little book. So if you'd like to see, now if you have a think, what do you think baby frogs are called? Have a think. Sure, we'll find out. Once when I was little, 
My mum read me a story about a frog that drank and drank and drank and grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Afterwards, mum asked me if I'd like to watch some real frogs growing. I know where there's a pond with lots of frogs' eggs in it, she said. We could bring some home. I was frightened. I don't want any frogs jumping about getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I said. But mum gave me a hug. It's only a story, she said. Even when our frogs are grown up, they'll still be smaller than my hand. Oh, I said, OK. Next day, we went to look at the pond. The water was dark brown and there was grey jelly stuff floating on the top. Yuck, I said. There's the frog spawn, said Mum, and she pointed to the grey jelly stuff. I bet that was late last Friday night. The frogs were croaking so loudly, I couldn't get to sleep. And it says that male frogs croak to attract the female frogs for mating. And the females lay eggs called frog spawn. You see the black dot in the middle of each jelly shell, said Mum. That's going to grow into a tadpole. Where are the frogs? I asked. Tadpoles grow into frogs, said Mum. Little ones, no giant frogs here. Mum put some pond weed and some stones into a bag. She filled a bucket with pond water, then I scooped a little of the frog spawn into it. And if you're going to do this at home, it says always use pond water for growing frogs at home because tap water has chemicals like fluoride in it and it might poison the frogs. When we got home, we put everything into a big fish tank in the kitchen. The cat kept peering at it, so we had to put a wire net over the top so it didn't eat the frog spawn. I counted 27 little black dots. Each dot was inside its own jelly shell. The tank should be somewhere that's cool and away from direct sunlight if we're going to do this at home. Every day when I woke up, I went straight downstairs to look at the frog spawn. So the inner tank the eggs hatch into tadpoles about 10 days after they're laid. And here the little dots grew into bigger dots, and then into tiny comma shapes, little bean shapes. And then one morning, I saw the first tadpole wriggling out of its jelly shell. At first, the tadpoles didn't do much. They just stayed close to their jelly shells and nibbled at the pond weed. But after two or three days, they looked quite different. There were feathery things on their heads, and I could see their eyes. The feathery bits are called gills, and they're what underwater animals use for breathing. So fish will use gills on the side of their heads and their necks for breathing. And they swam very fast. Ten of the eggs didn't hatch out. The black dots went dull and cloudy, and Mum took them away. Then we cleaned out the tank and put in fresh weed and pond water. One of the tadpoles swam into my hand and I was putting a stone back. It was slippery and slithery and it made me jump. After the tadpoles hatch, the pond water should be changed at least twice a week. After a bit, I got used to having tadpoles and I didn't look at them so often. When Mum told me they had little feathery bits, had their little feathery bits had gone, I didn't believe her. But it was true. Because tadpoles only have gills outside their bodies at first. Then, they grow gills inside their bodies, and the outside ones disappear. It was me that saw the next change, though. Look! I shouted, and Mum rushed to see. Some of the tadpoles had grown two little bumps. Mum said the bumps would grow into back legs. They grew very quickly. One day, there were two little bumps. The next day, the bumps were stumps. And the day after that, they were all most proper legs. And when their feet unfolded, they were tiny and webbed, like tiny brown green fans. They aren't ted tadpoles anymore, I said. They're not quite frogs. The not quite frogs grew front legs next, and then their tails got shorter, and their mouths got wider. Now they're frogs, Mum said, baby ones. And baby frogs are called froglets. So if you knew that, well done. Soon the baby frogs were popping up and gulping at the surface of the water. One of them tried to climb onto the stones, but it slid off. 
Mum said they were getting ready to leave the water. Grown-up frogs breathe air, she said. That's what the stones are for, so our frogs can climb out of the water and breathe. And it says that as tadpoles slowly turn into frogs, they grow lungs for breathing air and their gills disappear. And you've got lungs inside your body to help you get the air from the outside. Not long after that, Mum said it was time to take our baby, baby frogs back to live in the pond with all the other baby frogs. I was sorry to leave them, but Mum said we could come back and visit every day. Baby frogs need space to grow and room to hop around. Grown-up frogs live most of their lives on land, only returning to their ponds to breed. One rainy morning a week later, Mum woke me up very early. Hurry, she said, and we ran downstairs and out to the pond. There were hundreds of tiny frogs hopping over the grass. They're looking for dark, wet places to live in, Mum said, but they won't go far and in a couple of years they'll be back to lay frog spawn of their own. Will they be bigger then? I asked. Just a little, said Mum. Good, I said. I like having frogs jumping about, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So in the end, the little girl wasn't scared of frogs after all, was she? She enjoyed looking at the frogs as they grew. Well, it's been lovely to see you again, everybody. I hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.